Libra, welcome. Your singles reading. This is for February 2022 time frame. This is a purely predictive read. Uh, don't don't really see this as someone that uh, you're already aware of, uh, although a lot of times people say it is. So uh, but that's kind of how I'm thinking of it when I ask Spirit to reveal, because I want this to be uh, the one that's right for you. So if it is somebody already in your ballywick, well, they're the one that's right with you. That's the main thing. So this is always positive reading because it, it's not triggery. This is the one that's right for you to do your soul's work. So if you're someone that, you know, is here and you know you're doing soul's work and you want to do your soul's work and you want that one who's best aligned with you, that means they'd be best, uh, you'd be best aligned for them as well. That's all we're doing is we're asking Spirit to help us identify this person. And to do this, I'm using the four pillars, I call it, the uh, four pillars of a relationship. And here we have the emotional aspects with two cards, the intellectual aspects. Uh, this is love and sexual aspects. I call this, you know, core values and lifestyle. And I'll get the astrology here, or, you know, call it out as it go along. We'll look for the moon and sun and... Uh, Venus and Mars signs, at least. So what we have here, guys, is someone who had a literally painful childhood. And it was more than one thing. It's hard to say the story they would tell. Uh, I think they had a single parent, probably a mother, given our nature of our society, not necessarily. Um, they, their, their parent, the parent that they had uh, may have been sick, too, I believe. Um, not necessarily mentally ill, possibly though, but it's somehow uh, incapacitated. And so there was uh, a lack of uh, protection around them. And remember, this is your person. I'd say they're perfect or they have perfect childhood, but they'd be the right one for you. And, you know, many of us had difficult childhood. Um, they suffered it well. They have a Virgo mood very clearly with the hermit here. You notice the hermit too is you see how he's got his lantern out and he sees the snake. So, you know, now he can take a stick, scoot it out of the way or whatever he wants to do. Uh, but the hermit goes inside and looks at the self. So uh, one of the things will be strong with your person is uh, their mental life uh, will be very introspective and very critical of themselves. So, you know, they, they really would seldom need anyone to correct them uh, because they would be constantly doing that uh, as they go along, you know. I mean, they're already probably correcting themselves in their minds, you know, before it may potentially something happens, you know. They may uh, think about it and correct it in their minds before, it, before they even do it. <clears throat> and therefore, they prevent problems, you hear. And a lot, I was reading in a forum the other day about the, uh, astrology for I'd say anything, but <laughs> and a Virgo uh, moon is is um, basically a mental illness, or <laughs> uh, it does it can be very challenging. It all depends on how it's placed, though. So it can just mean you're needing diet and keep your shit together because that's what you need to do to be uh, to feel safe. That's what the moon's all about. Now here we have the sun and the intellect, and um, this is a Taurus sun. So we have a Taurus sun, Virgo moon. Uh, someone's very, you know, earth-centered here. And with the lovers here, it's kind of in the deep unconscious part of the intellectual position. Um, and you see with this one, too, and you can see in this, yes, the, the, the soldier here is kind of like a dream, not real. It's kind of a ghost or really a dream. She's swooning. She's very real. Um in, in between the two pillars. Um, so this is a uh, anima or animus, you know, an idealization of the uh, love, really. So it kind of tells me, it, it, it's a guess, uh, they might have their Taurus son in their seventh house of their natal uh, chart, um, possibly. So let me know if that's the case. That one I would like to know. Um, I, it, because, you know, it could go uh, different ways. I mean, they could have their Venus over here, uh, which I think is Aquarius Venus. What they say, sword, maybe that's, you know, uh, um, trying their son 
uh, even that could be, possibly do it, uh, although you wouldn't think so as much with an Aquarius Venus. Uh, but <clears throat> in any case, they are someone's very focused on love and relationship, okay? Uh, in Venus is, uh, rules Taurus, so in uh, uh, the second house and Earth, so uh, very solidly uh, Venusian. Um, and this is someone, you look at the hermit next to the four of pentacles, um, you know, they're going to dig in their heels like a Taurus. They're not going to want change, uh, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, not going to be their thing. <clears throat> they're probably pretty darn careful, you know, how they move along. Um, so by the time, like I said, they're already criticizing themselves before they've taken action. They have running scenarios through their head, uh, really thinking uh, through the future, future planning, you know. <clears throat> kind of thing. Um, and then with their Venus in Aquarius, such a beautiful ace of swords here with the dove. Um, you know, I'm a Venus in Scorpio. I'll put it this way. So Venus in Scorpio, it's debilitated there because, you know, it's very possessive and stuff. It's not really what Venus is all about. Uh, Taurus, it's all about Libra. You guys, it's about love and acceptance and being unconditional and you know, Scorpio's like, you know, no, you know, I'm, I got to know we have this real personal thing. Um, the type, this love, it's impersonal. It's not, not weak. It's not, not good. It's not bad. Uh, there's a, a kind of impersonalness to it. You know, I think like if God came down, said to uh, uh, Venus and Scorpio, you know, well, you know, you got to make a decision right now. Either your lover's going to have to die or all little baby seals in the world are going to have to die, David. I'd be like, <laughs> okay, well, I mean, Told you, guy who killed baby seals, that's an asshole move, but I can't let you kill my lover. That wouldn't even be a question. God, I don't even know why you bother to ask. You're supposed to know my mind. Why are you even bothering me right now with this stuff? Whereas if God asks that question of Aquarius Venus, they're going to have a hard time sorting through that one because they can't be having the death of uh, all the world's baby seals on their mind. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what's I think interesting here? They have a Libra Mars, and you can have a Libra Mars. So uh, this too could be where, and you notice it's next to the lovers, which I know is the only Gemini card. Uh, but in this case here, it, this is where they, you know, they're going to act like, I think it'd be really well uh, compatible with you. You no, normally wouldn't think of an Earth sign, you know, but look what we have here. You this Venus is an air is very uh, strong. Uh, and you're going to have the Mars. Um, now, Mars on the sun's not normally something good, but it is powerful. Um, and, uh, it, uh, you being Libra, the sun debilitated there, okay? Mars not thrilled in Libra either, though. So it's kind of be like a, a battle of the not Titans um, there. Uh, but I'm just thinking of sinistry. You know, if they had their Mars on your sun, it might not be so bad. It's going to be very engaging. You know, normally, it's, you wouldn't think of it as being sexual, but, you know, uh, what you want and just kind of the way you want to be would tend to be in alignment uh, with their Mars energy, uh, the way they want to take action. So it could line you up kind of in a good way. With it can come... Uh, you know, power struggles. So a lot with that. But with this, nothing about this Venus Aquarius, completely honest. They got no game. They don't got no time for game. That's a great thing. Okay, Scorpio Venus, it can't be like that. You know, typically you're pretty loyal, but you know, it definitely isn't all about hidden stuff and secret Scorpio. Okay, Aquarius is out in a fucking open in Venus, man. And he, he ain't going to be clingy and he ain't going to like clingy either, guys. Um, he, <clears throat> maybe a little more open to that in the bedroom. So you may find that, you know, um, it, you know they have air, Venus, and air, Mars, you know. Uh, so um, you could have two with Aquarius, Venus. You tend to get an uh, element of sapiophile in there. So they're going to typically not really fall in love with someone that is not able to engage their mind significantly. I think this will only be like increased uh, with the Libra here. 
Um, so I think they'd be very careful about how they get in love. So they probably won't be telling you stories about, you know, a lot of uh, unfortunate uh, relationships that they had had. Uh, because I think they, they would be slow. They would really think things through. Uh, they would be very uh, uh, transparent at all times and, and open and communicate probably very well, you know, in a relationship. Uh, it might be too much for someone. This, this kind of personality. So, and remember, they're fixed. So, a lot of me, you know, the struggle for them, depending on their bars, how, what they've made of it over time, the struggle for them would, you know, always be, you know, this, the, this Taurus energy doesn't really want to do what everyone else wants to do. It really wants to do what it wants to do in a really strong way. Um, but, you know, Libra Mars definitely is thinking about, well, okay, well, if that's what they want to do, I, I might want to do that. And so here would come the Aquarius, Venus. It would come in probably, you know, in a very logical way, particularly working with a Virgo moon. They actually could work together pretty good. And, you know, uh, this person may really logic out some things like, yeah, I really don't want to go to that party, but, you know, uh, for the good of the relationship, and because you know I've been out all week, and da da da, and, and, and talk themselves into it in that way. Uh, but you can always count. Of course, it's your person, so this is not really an issue anyway. But I think this is the type of person, and whatever they do, they could be very fair and balanced, you know, in the way they deal with uh, anyone, you know, Venus's relationships. Now, when it gets to their work, I think with the chariot and the five of cups, and I see, you know, the home life, this is cancer. So I get to tell you right now, this could be someone that the home life is very important to them. Uh, they're probably, a, I'm not really sure, but I can tell you, they probably don't want like a party every night. They, they want their house and their home to be a home, be kind of a sanctuary. Uh, they'll have opinions about it, man or woman, one way or another. Um about the home, okay, and they want it to be comfortable, Taurus, this Cancer uh, chariot down here, um, in the Five of Cups, and this person, it's, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to their career, they don't do, they do what they feel like doing, they, <laughs> I don't know how to put it other than that, like, with them, and they've probably done this since college, and their whole life, uh, if it doesn't feel right, they don't do it. They don't have any, they don't put any energy into things that are not in alignment with their soul's path. I think the chariot a lot is aligning with our soul's path. I mean, it's a true victory because, you know, this is the victory of the soul kind of energy. So they may have some sense of their soul's path here and some spiritual path. And I'm, I'm not sure, it, I'm, I have to wonder too. They might have cancer to tenth house, uh, but cancer somehow prominent, and they may do something in the healing field. They may actually be a nurse. Would be my most likely guess. Um, it, they don't like to see uh, people suffer. That's what it is, um, and they really don't like to suffer. Uh, they kind of won't do it. They'll, they'll, with this chariot can be rising above it spiritually, rising above it by, it's like avoiding that snake by thinking it through ahead of time and, you know, pre-planning, you know, uh, the military, perfect uh, planning is necessary for every mission, right? Uh, this is kind of what that Virgo mind is always doing. It's like that, uh, it's like, uh, What's his name? Uh, the board conspiracy when he's in the restaurant saying, I remember every license plate and I know how many people are left in it and uh, all those things. And mine is kind of working like that all the time. And so in the same way, it's like they, you know, they're don't, not going to have a victim mentality, I guess we'll try to say. You know, uh, they might identify with victims. They might feel a sense of wanting to help. But they themselves will consistently refuse to, I think what they would call it would be indulge in any kind of victimhood in themselves. And uh, so, for instance, like if they were depressed, I mean, they'd probably go seek treatment and they probably wouldn't blog about it or anything like that. You know, to them it would be some, something to be overcome. Uh, I think there's an emphasis in general at this person upon a high vibrational level. They probably did a lot of work 
uh, from the childhood, you know, somewhere along the way, they've done something, you know, uh, they'll tell you that story too, you know, uh, therapy, talk therapy, pro different programs, uh, probably be interesting to hear uh, how that works for them. But uh, the precursor to being this kind of healer usually, you know, kind of, you got to heal yourself, so... Let me know what you think of this, Leavers. I hope it's helpful to you somehow. If you can, give me a like. That helps move the algorithm along. If you uh, comment, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I do appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe. Thank you, guys.